Um, I am doing continuing yoga training right now with a guy by the name of Paul Grilly. He's the one that quite literally wrote the, the first book on yin yoga uh, quite a few years ago. And my favorite yin instructor, Barbara Davis, um, took a number of workshops with him. And I've sent out copies of um, the bone pictures right from his website. But what he is teaching is the functional approach to yoga, one that has alignment as really low on the priority. Because in the functional system of yoga, the most important thing is to use a pose to get into the muscle group or the joint or the bones that you want to stress. And so what he has done, he has really emphasized what my belief structure has been uh, for yoga. And that's that you work to modify, to intensify a pose to meet your own specific needs. And another way to think about this is because you have such a unique body structure, your bones and your muscles, you have an opportunity under the functional approach to get into the perfect pose. And my goal, as always, has been trying to help you get into a pose that's the most meaningful for you and I'm, what I'm starting to do is, and I will continue to do this, is identify the, one of the, one or more of the 14 skeletal segments in your body and one or more of the 10 muscular groups in your body to have stress. And, um, you need what you want to do is turn it down, Chris. Is to um, is to modify the pose so that it's best for you. And how that is, um, I I hope I can give you direction. And if you can't get into a pose and feel it in the body area that I'm intending, give me a call or write me an email and that will help me become a better instructor. So, today I'm gonna start off in a comfortable seated position or you can get into um, uh, another position on your on your knees. I may be too far away from the camera for you to be able to see this nice blue stripe again. Uh, this is to show that you know, stand up. That blue stripe is just a piece of tape, but it's my straight leg. And so when I rotate my hip out. It rotates out, rotates in. And when you come down to a seated position and you bring your legs out, you can see the rotation on my hips. With the legs crossed like this, it's a big outward rotation. Or if you wanted to sit on your knees, in, in uh, this position, like um, hero, or even move your feet out a little bit. But if you're sitting on your knees, my stripe is vertical. So that tells me that there's no rotation on my hips. Move my feet out a little bit, almost like saddle. And there's an inward rotation. So. From here, in a comfortable position, your hands can be anywhere. Lift the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. 
Take a deep cleansing breath into your nose and exhale it all out through your mouth. Take a deep cleansing breath in through your nose again. Let it all out through your mouth. Let your breath come to its own natural rhythm. In and out through your nose. Notice your breath here. Let that breath come all the way down into the bottoms of your lungs. Explore. This Beginning meditation is a way to help you separate your mind from your body. Your mind's job is to control everything all the time. But through the practice of yoga, you can give your mind a break by meditating as you do the practice. And the way to do that is to follow your breath. And with practice, as you follow your breath, your mind becomes free. And it can rest. And it will be there when you need it. But if it begins to get busy, and be sure it will, when it does, just notice what has come up, whether it's something from the past that you can't do anything about, so it really doesn't matter. Or maybe it's about something big in the future, about um, something small in the future. Just brush that aside, deepen your breath, and begin again. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, open up your eyes. Come off of your block. If you're on the block. Again, go back into that seated position and bring the soles of your feet together. Into butterfly. And from here, maybe you want to rock a little bit from left to right and clear the flesh from your sit bones. And then inhale your spine tall. And then on an exhale, begin walking your hands forward. And as you come forward, feel the, the rounding of your spine. And then let your head just drop forward. You should be feeling this in your groins, your inner thighs, and then your back, primarily your lumbar spine. That's your lower, lower part of your spine. Those are the biggest vertebrae. And continue your breathing. Try to bring softness to your inner thighs, to your calves, to your lower belly. And maybe you can feel your body being drawn down towards the mat. If your arms are stretched out in front, but they're not resting on the mat, try just 
paying attention to where your chest is, how high it is, and slowly bend those elbows and draw them back towards your hips. And feel your shoulders release. Maybe you can even sense a little bit more of a forward fold. With your head nodded forward, you shouldn't have any any stress in your neck. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, begin walking your hands back up. Straighten your spine, crown of your head up towards the ceiling. Bring your hands behind your hips. And then bring your knees up, your feet flat on the mat. And then once you wipe your knees from left to right, you feel your thighs your quads, your hamstrings, and your groins. And the next time you come to center, pause. From here, sit up straight. Bring both legs out in front of you. Move your right leg over to the right side of your mat. And then bend your left knee and bring your sole of your foot into your right thigh. This is half dragonfly or half butterfly. Um, it's pretty much um, the same pose. And from here, turn towards your foot. And I'll offer you two different options here. But the first one, inhale your Spine tall, crowning your head up. And then on the next exhale, walk your hands forward towards that right foot. You're stretching your quad, I'm sorry, you're stretching your hamstrings. You're stretching your spine, maybe your shoulders. And your left knee is going down towards the mat. Notice how this is working for you. And on an inhale, just come back up a little bit. And this time, just move off towards your left a little bit, maybe halfway between your knees. Inhale your spine long, and then forward forward. And see how this is. And what works best for you. You're trying to get to your hamstring. That's the main target here. What's happening in your left knee is not all that important. And in fact, if you want to move that left foot to make this more comfortable for you, go ahead. And now you have two options. And then you also have a lot more because you can go anywhere with your forward fold here. You can come over towards your left knee, a little bit closer towards your, your right foot. But select the one that's best for you. Maybe you feel one more in your groin and your hamstring. And if that's the case, and that's where you want the stress to go, go for it. 
Remember, you can always use a block underneath that knee. You'll still get a stretch of that hamstring, except it will release. So experiment here. Knowing that the, the main target is your hamstrings, but you need that target to soften. Soften your right glutes. Try softening your pelvic floor. Those mula bundas. If you have stress in your shoulders, maybe bend those elbows a bit. Let those shoulder blades roll down your back. That's not a command, that's just a question. Whatever is best for your body right now. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, begin to walk your hands back. If you employed any blocks, carefully remove them. Help both legs come out to the front and then get your footprints on the mat. Reach behind your hips. And again, windshield wiper your knees and see how different this is. Your right hamstrings and your right glutes are probably feeling this pose. And the next time you come to center, pause. Sit up and then come over onto your right hip, bring your feet around behind you and come into the table, facing the front of the mat. And do a few cat cows here. On an inhale, your belly drops, your chest comes forward, your sit bones lift and separate. And then as you exhale, round your spine, tuck your tailbone, your last your chin comes towards your chest. And then with your own breath, do what you need to do to lubricate your spine. And the next time you come to center, pause. From here, reach your right foot up and back towards the back wall. And yes, this is my favorite pose, dragon. So from here, on an exhale, bring that right foot up next to your right pinky finger. And if you have to take a couple of steps up, that's fine. Move your left knee back. Could be only an inch or two, or it could be a lot. But try to keep that front knee vertical. Notice my blue stripe is perfectly plumb. Because you want your leg to be straight but flexed. This is a big flex 
toward your psoas muscle. Likewise, on your left leg, this is a huge stretch with an extension. Your hands are flat on the mat, like dragon. Although you can modify this, you can walk that right foot out to the right if it feels better. You can use your hands on blocks if that's better. But there are going to be two stages here. Another option that you have is you can raise the floor for your back knee by placing the block underneath your shin. And again, all of these modifications, you don't need permission to do. These are all modifications that are available to you anytime you do dragon. Now, if this is perfect for you, stay right here. If you'd like a little bit different pose, walk your foot out to the right a little bit, doesn't have to be far, and walk your hands forward and then come down onto your elbows or maybe onto a block. And try to keep that right knee vertical. And you can feel an added stretch on your psoas, right on that inner thigh. Maybe if this is too much, just back up. Maybe just bend that right knee out if that feels better. But you're opening up that right hip. This is stressing both of your hip flexors, both your psoas and your iliacus on both legs. Those are two of the biggest muscle groups in your body. Begin to deepen your breath. And bring your hands, palms to the floor, and push the floor away. Maybe walk that right knee, the right foot back in. And when you can, walk your hands back, bring your right knee back to meet the left. And here in table, you can stay. You might want to make some big circles with your hips. And really exaggerate the rolling towards your right hip if that works best. Or you can curl your toes under and lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. And then look between your hands, carefully lower your knees, and do a couple more cat cows. The next time you come to center, pause. From here, lift your left hand up and out. And then on an inhale, maybe twist so that arm goes up towards the ceiling. If you not, if you have a shoulder issue. And then on an exhale, thread the needle, bring that left hand behind the right wrist and reach it way off to the right. Coming down onto your left shoulder and maybe onto your left cheek. This is a big inward rotation on your left shoulder. 
You should feel this across your back as your shoulder blades are being pulled apart. Maybe you want to walk that right hand forward way beyond the front of your mat so that you're getting a nice stretch on your right armpit. And then try to soften your glutes, soften your belly. Try to slow down your breath. And just relax here. But if your shoulder is hurting from this, make a modification. All pain is bad. And by modification, you can bring that left hand back closer to your body or maybe down towards your knees. Begin to deepen your breath. If your right hand is way out in front, bring it back next to your face. And then on an inhale, push the floor away, lifting your chest, retrieve your left arm out and up. And then back down onto the mat. And another cat towel here. The next time you come to center, pause. From here, lower your hips to one side or the other and swing your feet around to the front of the mat. And from here, bend your right knee, bring that right foot up into onto the floor, but inside that right uh, left thigh, we're doing Marici twist. So you can leave it here, or you can bring your foot on the left side of your left thigh. That doesn't make the pose any bigger or any better. It just changes the way that you feel this in your right hip. It's a bigger twist if you take your foot over on the left side, but that's not, that's not necessary. Inhale your spine tall. Bring your right hand behind your hips onto the mat, inhale, and then exhale, turn from your hip crease to the right. And then maybe with every exhale, there's a little bit more twist. Maybe do that for a couple more breaths. And then be satisfied with where you are. and just concentrate on relaxing your body. Now your gaze should be off to the right side of your mat, not looking all the way behind you. You don't want to overstress your cervical spine. Your head can be looking down if that's easier on your neck. But relax here. We're going to be here for about two more minutes. So it's important that your left arm isn't super engaged. This is kind of like a seated spinal twist, except you're using the weight of your torso to help you stay in this pose. Probably the most amount of tension you feel is in your right arm. 
But if your right arm is pretty close to being straight, you can hold the weight. Close your eyes and turn inside. You should be feeling this in your chest with a twist across your pecs, in your obliques, those muscles in your side body that are responsible for making me twist. Begin to deepen your breath. And on your next exhale, release, come back to the front. Use your hands to free up that right leg. Let that right leg go out to the front. Bring your hands behind your hips and just wave your feet. Gently putting a little bit of twist back into your hip socket. And then come down onto your elbows. Make sure you have a block handy. And then all the way down onto your back. Bring your hands up towards the ceiling and then lower them onto the floor behind your head. And push your heels away and your palms away, getting along. And then your toes and your fingers. And then bring your hands back next to your hips. Bend your knees, walk your feet up towards your sit bones. Find that block. Just get that handy. But to start going into bridge, tuck your tailbone under, engaging the small of your back to the mat. And inhale, lift your hips up. And feel the higher you go, the more you feel this in your quads. And then come back down. This time, grab your block. Inhale, lift all the way up. And then place the block the highest way you feel comfortable. Now, if you have a back issue and you don't want to use the block, just lying on your back with your pelvis tipped forward, you'll get a little bit of a, an arch. And once you're stable, maybe you want to walk your feet out towards the front of the mat. And from here, maybe experiment by moving your feet out a little bit or closer together and see what is best for your hip structure. You have a natural angle of, of adduction with the amount of space between your legs. And in that, whatever that angle is, is the most comfortable. And if you'd like to extend this a little bit more, maybe lift your arms back up towards the ceiling and lower them back onto the mat beyond your head. And get this stretch across your chest. The main muscles that you're stretching here is the rectus abdominis, which is the main muscles running up from your pubic bone up to your chest. By relaxing your glutes, you're stretching your hip flexors in front, your quads.
with your arms overhead, your backs are, are getting a little bit of strain. It's all good. This should be one of the most comfortable poses, unless you have a back issue. And if you're experiencing any pain, move away from this. Maybe you can feel your soreness right on the very front bottom of your pelvis where it ties into your femurs. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, use both hands to help each other return to the front of your body. When you're ready, bend your knees and walk your feet towards your sit bones again. And then on an inhale, lift your hips up, retrieve that block and set it aside. Come down onto your back. Draw your knees into your chest. Begin to rock from left to right. Maybe bring your head to your knees. Maybe make circles with those hips. I'm sorry, with your knees. And then in the opposite direction. And then come over to your right side. Push the floor away and come back up to a seated position. This time it's going to be half butterfly on the left side. So straighten out your left leg to the front left corner of your mat. Bend your right knee. Bringing your right sole to the inside of your left thigh. Inhale your spine tall. And on the next inhale, forward fold over that left leg. Feeling your hamstrings begin to stretch. Know that we're going to try two options here just to give you a flavor of what else it can be you can explore on your own also you know your body better than anybody but by waiting in a pose for about a minute you can begin to soften and see what it has to offer And then on an inhale, come up about halfway. Walk your hands to the right somewhat so that you're about equal distance between your knees. Inhale and then exhale, bring your hands forward and see how that is. That might be better than over that leg. And this side might be different from your other side. It most likely is. One of your hamstrings on your dominant leg <coughs> is much more muscular than on your weaker leg. So it will be less flexible. Embrace that difference. 
but still get the stretch into that hamstring. And then when you're ready, just allow your spine to round. As you let your spine round, you're lengthening your spine. You're creating more space in between each and every vertebra. You can bend your elbows whenever is good for you. And if at any point the pose becomes too much or not enough, you can always make adjustments. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, walk your hands back. Straighten out your right leg towards the front of the mat. Use both hands to help bend both knees. With your feet flat on the floor. Hands behind your hips. And when she'll wipe her knees again, you'll see how different this side feels. By now, you may have a lot more flexibility just because you're warmed up. But notice the difference. And the next time you come to center, pause, sit upright, and then swing your legs around behind, coming into the table again for that wonderful dragon pose. So starting with your body and table, do a couple of cat cows here. Loosen up your spine. They've gotten a little bit tight. And the next time you come to center, pause. Lift your left foot up and back, stretching out that hamstring. Really pushing that heel away. Try to keep your hips low. And then on an exhale, bring that left foot next to your left pinky. And get it to where you want. And then move your right knee back a little or a lot. And that just depends on how flexible you are and how much you know you can do. Bring both hands flat on the mat. This is, this is called high flying dragon. High because this is as long as your arms get. Stretch your spine long. And maybe when you do that, you feel a little bit more tension in that left thigh. Because what you've done is you've elongated your psoas muscle. Because you moved your spine farther towards the front of the mat. And your psoas is attached to the top of your femur and also your lumbar vertebrae. Try to lower your hips towards the mat. 
Maybe you can soften your right quads. And your right glutes. And if this pose is good for you here, stay here. If you'd like to modify this at all, coming into low flying dragon, maybe you want to move that left foot out a little bit to the left. Maybe you want to come down onto your elbows or onto a couple of blocks. You can always lower that left knee going into a wing dragon. But as you make these minor modifications, notice how your hips change. Notice what you feel in the top of your right hip. Any movement on the left side affects the right. And those muscles that used to be soft may be really in tension now. Maybe you're gripping. And if that's the case, after about a minute, just back up because it's not worth it. You want the softness so that your tension can transfer to your fascia. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, bring your palms to the mat. Lift your chest up. <coughs> bring that foot in. Walk your hands back. And bring your left knee to meet the right. And do a couple of cat cows or big circles or curl your toes under and lift your hips up. You did downward facing dog. Whatever works for you, you don't expect the same pose on the other side to be the same. And then carefully lower your knees. Do two more cat cows. And the next time you come to center, thread the needle using your right arm out to the right, and then up however much is good for you. And then on an exhale, thread the needle behind your left wrist way off to the right. Coming down onto your shoulder. If you have to use a block, that's a smart thing to do. And then breathe here and observe your body. Feel the twist in your right obliques, and in your core. You can stay here, or if you'd like to modify this, walk your left fingertips towards the front of your mat and beyond, so that you're looking underneath your armpit. But if this poses any strain that you don't wish to have, just go back. You can feel this in your shoulder girdle, in your rotators. Even in your serratus muscles, going from your ribs up to your left shoulder bones.
You have to about four more breaths here. On your next exhale, walk that left hand back next to your face. And then push the floor away, lifting free your right arm out and up. And then back down onto the mat. Do a couple more cat cows here. And the next time you come to center, pause. Come down onto one knee or one hip or the other. Swing your feet around to the front of the mat again. Straighten on your legs. And then bend that left knee. Bring that foot up inside your right thigh. Or if you wish, you can bring that foot over onto the right side of that thigh. One is no better than the other. All you're doing is you're getting a little bit more inward rotation on your, on your thighs. So from here, inhale your chest high, bring your left hand behind your back, and on an exhale, twist to the left. Doing this mighty spinal twist, sitting up. Try dropping your shoulder blades down your back. That will push your collarbones up. Maybe you can get an extra quarter inch of movement on your exhale. And then when you're at the right spot, just pause there and begin to soften all your muscles. Maybe start with your glutes. Feel your sit bones. Soften your thighs. Your gaze should be off to the left, not to the back of your mat. But your shoulders should be more pointed towards the side of your mat, too. Your gaze can be down at the at your mat or somewhere off to the side. Your chin doesn't have to be high. If your right arm is working too hard, just stand up a little bit, left knee. You don't get extra points for being in agony, trying to muscle your way into a union pose. Soften your, your lower abdomen. If your teeth are gritted, un, unclench them. Take the tongue from between your teeth. Soften your eyes. And follow your breath here.
this pose is a little bit yang, but mainly yin. Your arms are getting a little bit of muscle work. The rest should all be released. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next exhale, release, turning back to center. With both arms, help your left leg up and over your right, and back out to the front of the mat. Again, bring your hands behind your hips. Wave your feet one direction and then the other. And then carefully come down onto your elbows. And then all the way down onto your back. Push your heels away. Bring your arms up and over your head. Push your, push your palms away. And your fingernails and toenails. And go from heels and palms to toes and fingers a few times on your own. And then bring your hands back on the front side of your body. Walk your feet up towards your sit bones. Go on into your chest. Give yourself a big squeeze. And then rock from left to right or make big circles. Try pushing your hips towards the front of the mat, elongating your spine. And then rock all the way from your hip to your shoulder on each side. And the next time you're at center, pause there. Release one leg out to the front of the mat. And then the other. Get that perfect distance apart. Maybe you want to lock your hips from left to right to get the perfect part of your sacrum engaged with the mat. Bring your palms up next to your body. If you want to walk your shoulder blades farther underneath your chest, go ahead. Maybe roll your head from left to right. Find the perfect spot. Take a deep cleansing breath into your nose. And slide out through your mouth. Take another deep cleansing breath into your nose. Let it all out through your mouth. You take rest.
Begin to deepen your breath. Bring your awareness back into your space. Bring movement to your fingers and to your toes, to your wrists and to your ankles. Roll your head from left to right. And when you're ready, bend your knees and walk your feet up towards your sit bones. Draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a squeeze and massage the back of your spine and all the muscles that you've been using. And then coming all the way over onto your right side, use your right arm as a pillow. And pause here for a moment, allowing your body to observe itself and seal what it's learned during today's practice. And then using the strength in your left hand, push the floor away and come up to a seated position. Thank you for sharing your practice with me this afternoon. Doing yoga brings so much joy to my life and I hope to yours. Certainly it brings health through greater lung capacity, greater strength and greater flexibility. Take the kindness and the compassion that you practice on your mat and share it with your family, your friends, and all those people you meet. Namaste. You may unmute yourselves. My name is Clint, and this has been Yin Yoga.